Hi, this is Rob Waller from Business Loan Services and welcome to the Business Finance Bulletin Extra. Um, kind of an extra little a snippet of information to my normal weekly bulletins. And this week I'm glad to be joined by David Lewis from Camrose Consulting. So welcome to the programme, David. Um, morning, Rob. Thanks for asking me to, to have a chat. Yeah, delighted for you to be joining us. So first, yeah. David, before we get into the topic that I want to discuss today, perhaps you just give us a bit of a background of, uh, of, of what you do and uh, say a little bit about your history. Right, okay. Um, I used to be a partner in a, um, a firm of accountants. Um, we dealt with some small, bus- uh, lots of small businesses, but also some fairly chunky businesses. So mm-hmm. I've got a, a sort of a fairly broad perspective of the way different businesses work. Okay. Um, in 2004, I, I left that um, and actually started working with a fair-sized business that had been strapped for cash, um, had uh, various complex lo- loan arrangements, and I was actually tasked with um, um, monitoring cash flow, improving cash flow, and just basically seeing how the business was heading. Um, right. And certainly management information was absolutely critical uh, with that. Mm. Um, since then, I've been working as a, a consultant, and a lot of it has been mergers and acquisitions related. And I often see situations where um, deals either fall into difficulty because there's poor information, and sometimes they can fall over because there's um, poor information. Mm. And other things that I sometimes do, I occasionally get called in where um, business, businesses have suffered because of poor financial management and get, get, in, uh, get called in to, uh, to resolve issues. So, oh, okay. um, yeah. Yeah, great. Oh, good. So, obviously, you've been at the sharp end in terms of the, say, the accountancy practice and now really hands-on support to business owners that probably need, say, a bit more specific advice and guidance, particularly around, as you said, mergers and acquisitions then. Yeah, yeah, ab- ab- absolutely. And... Yeah. Uh, um, it, it does strike me that there's lots of businesses that could be more profitable. Just talking even pro, pre-COVID, um, if mm. they were actually up their game with, um, uh, on their financial management. Yeah, um, I, I'm asked the point that uh, I wanted to have a chat with you today was about um, use of management information. I don't know right. about you, but silly over the years when we've been dealing with business owners in, in raising cash, um, one of the things as old as a massive information gap is say, the lack of management information and management accounting. And that's what I want to talk to you about today, because I know you're passionate about yep. businesses having up to date information. But f- first of all, yep. what do we mean by management information or MI? How would you describe it? Well, I, I think it's whatever helps you run your business. Um, it, it needs to work for your business. So, I mean, typically you, um, people uh, think in terms of accounts, so um, profit and loss account, balance sheet uh, in particular. Um, I, I mean, I do see a lot of businesses that just um, take a profit and loss account and that, regard that as their management information, but really that's not sufficient because if there's problems, um, if there's in, inaccuracies, you won't know unless you, you're looking at the balance sheets as well. Um, but beyond that, um, I, I think to really have proper information, you need to understand the cash flow as well and um, preparing a statement which... Um, Bridges the gap between profit and the change in cash is very, very important as well. Yeah. Um, then also, I mean, it really, you, there's no uh, one size fits all th- um, situation. It really depends on the business. Mm. But um, key performance indicators. So that can be, um, you know, certainly things like margins on different income streams. And mm. again, it's quite common for businesses to have sales and purchases and that's it and, and no detail. Mm. Um, so having some proper analysis on that is, yeah. is really important. Um, I think you picked up on the main point there about... I, I, I'm... Yeah. yeah. You picked up the main point there about the fact that accounting information at the year end, it can be so out of date, isn't it? If you think about it, you're, as you're a limited company, you've got nine months after year end in which to file. And as we yeah. see at the moment, uh, post-COVID, of course, Companies House have agreed now they've got another three months delay um, if you wish to have an yeah. before you file your accounts. So I guess picking up on the point about historic information, it's too late to identify and take action on red flags, I guess. Well, exactly. It needs to be up to date. Uh, apart from anything else, uh, you know, if it's um, months out of date, you're not going to use it. You're going to just say, well, that was three months ago. What, uh, what's the point? Things have moved on. It mm. needs to be pretty up to date and um 
you know, some businesses I've seen can produce uh, management accounts within a week, but I would say within three weeks of a, a month end is mm. uh, reasonably good and, 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 and reasonably up to date. Mm. Uh, but once you get beyond that, then its usefulness uh, d- uh, diminishes. Yeah. Um, what would you say would yeah. be included in a good management information pack then? What would be an ideal, uh, say, package that you would put together? What would it comprise of? Um, well, accounts mm. uh, comes management information. Um, the information needs to be relevant. So I would say the profit and loss account needs to be structured in a way that um, is uh, suitable for your business and reflects your business and what's important to it. Mm. So um, having a whole list of expenses, you know, no, you don't really need to know how much the, the uh, stationary cost is in a, in a month particularly, unless it's going to be very significant in your business. Mm. Um, but things like um, your, your your sales on different income streams or, or maybe with, with your main customers, the margins um, that are coming through, that type of thing. As a business grows, maybe the costs of um, a particular department. So looking at it from more from a functional point of view than an exp- expense heading type uh, point of view. Mm. Then, then there would need to be a balance sheet um, and KPIs. Um, I, I'm, I'm very keen on th- having things like debtor days, um, stock days, mm. creditor days, that, that, that sort of information. Mm. Uh, because if you know where you are with that, you can actually set targets and you, you know whether things are getting better or worse. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, I, uh, I worked in a business where I had to help uh, improve uh, cash flow. Mm. In that business, um, the better days were at about 60 days. Mm. And we, we set targets to reduce that, and it, we ended up re- reducing it to about high 40 days. And, and, and that was purely through ha- having management information to monitor it. And when there were problems and, and things were going away from target, we actually went in and said, let's have a look at your processes. Look, let's mm-hmm. have a look and see how you can improve things. Yeah, so the um, kind of concept I use with people is when, when you have management accounts, you can ask that important question, why? Or why has something moved from the yeah. month or the previous quarter? And of course, you can't it, you, exactly ask why uh, question with annual accounts, but it's not as immediate, is it? It's, uh, it's, it, it's certainly not immediate. And you, it, you, 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 you need to manage for, for now, not... not looking at something from, um, from nine months ago. It's just, mm. to me, it seems almost pointless to do that. Mm. Um, the other thing, actually, just going back to your, your previous question and why it's important having information. You know, if you're a bank or an outside shareholder, you're going to get comfort from having up-to-date information as well. Mm. Um, you don't want to have up-to-date information. Um, Going back to the pack, I think it's useful to actually have a one-page um, summary of action points or key points of the rising action points um, coming from that. Just a few bullet points, really, nothing too detailed. Mm. Um, I would also say that the information needs to be presented in a way that's that's readable. So I'm talking about having all, all, all this extra information that uh, businesses might not have, but you need to have summary information and then be able to drill down. Mm. And that way, um, you, I, I can, I, okay, I'm a numbers person, but I can see that other people's will, um, eyes will glaze over when they have uh, loads and loads of figures. So what you need to do is have it um, um, presented in a user-friendly way mm. and, and then be able to drill down into uh, more detailed information. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, is it kind of dangerous, isn't it, when, uh, when you get numbers, people like yourself involved, um, you can end up with bar graphs and pie charts and tables. And I guess it is trying to understand sometimes that many business owners and say kind of don't get the numbers and I guess this presenting it in a way that it's usable and actionable. Yeah, yes. And you might have on your profit and loss account, your make the sheet of your profit and loss account, you might have no more than I don't know, ten lines, something mm. like that. Mm. Uh, just with the summary information. Yeah. And then if something is looking a bit strange, then you have sheets behind that and you can drill down. Yeah. I like that um, you brought up the fact that you, this is, you can have a lot more detail in a management information pack than you would have in an annual yeah. uh, set of accounts. Because yeah. you can go down, I guess, as you mentioned, into product lines, functions, offices, departments, whatever it may be. Exactly. 
and it, it just needs to be relevant for for, for your business. Mm. Um, yeah. Mm. There's there's no one size fits all, and, and you just need you might need someone to to, to uh, and just help you with it. Mm. But um, it's it will be well worth the investment. Yeah, it really will be. You mentioned about um, about KPIs, those key performance indicators. What would you say some of the key measures you could set um, from management accounts? Uh, I've often been told probably no more than three things that you can kind of measure at any one time in order to take action. What would be the key bits of information and targets that you would extract from a, a good set of management information? I think, it, well, certainly, I think margins would be very important and, and margins by the, the main income streams, that, that would be very important. I think it really depends on what, what is important for the, that particular business. Mm. And, and there might be bits of information that are, not necessarily that wouldn't necessarily appear in a standard set of accounts so mm. it could be i don't know average price per per unit or something like that in in in, in the month or, or or something like that you need to think about what's actually driving your business mm. um as i said I'm, I'm quite keen on having things like debtor days there uh, um and, and particularly now i think in this sort of environment that those um cash related kpis i think mm. i think are, are really really important yeah for those people who are not not sure about the concept of um, monitoring debtor days and also creditor days, um, give a little bit of a, an explanation around that and how you can use that kind of measure. Well, yeah. So, debtor, so if you take your, your your billings and just count back, so say that you've got a um, hundred thousand pound that's owed, mm. just count back the number of days. Um, so, so, so that your cumulative billing gets to a hundred thousand pound, that would be your debtor days. Right. You can calculate that from from a set of accounts as well. Mm. Now, clearly, debtor days actually reflects how many days it's, it's, it's taking for your customers to pay you. So, if you have thirty days terms and it's forty days, then that's actually um, pointing to the fact that people are, are taking longer than they should. Mm. Um, and certainly from a business planning point of view, when you get into business planning, you need to make assumptions about your, de uh, your, your debtor days and your creditor days and your stock days and all, all those sort of things. So mm. having data, hard data that, um, that you can point to to say this is the way that we, um, um, this is our, our actual debtor days, um, would, um, yeah. is really important to, to, so you actually understand where you're going. I, I've, I've, looked at forecasts before in M&A situations where people just pluck numbers out of the air on these assumptions. Mm. Um, and if you're managing cash flow and planning for the future, you need to have um, hard numbers to yeah. back, back it up, really. Would you also advocate then having, um, it's called an age debtor and creditor list, this is where, where your portfolio is broken down into, into to kind of bandings, if you like? I, I, th I think that's um, I, I think that's very important, and it, it does need to be, be, be looked at. Um, for me, I, I think the, you know, it, it depends on who's looking at that information and how much that, that information needs to be there. Someone needs to look at it, whether it is, uh, the number one person in the company, I think it might depend on where they are and, and, and where their debtor days are compared with mm -hmm. expectations as well. Yeah. But it definitely, definitely needs to be there because that, that way you can actually go down a list and look at the. Uh, the balance is where amounts are over, over terms and then um, then chase. Mm. Yeah, I mean, often when reviewing um, kind of finance proposals when we're say, preparing packs to go to, to lenders, I often focus yeah. on the age debtor because you can see, say, a total of £100,000 owed to you. Um, but it's always good then to drill down the numbers because quite often you see what I call little rats and mice all down the lower end, you're 90 day plus, all relatively small yeah. banks. And so the business owners tended to overlook chasing. Yeah. But of course, when you add them all up, um, they come to quite a significant amount of money. I mean, certainly when I do due, due diligence, it's something that I, I always look at. Um, you know, it, it's something that you, you, you would home in on. Um, yeah. You want to know whether the, uh, the debtors are collectible. And from a bank's point of view, um, you know, it's all very well you saying that you're owed that money, but if you're not going to collect it, there's no value there. 
Mm. Um, so, um, yes, it's, it's something that you do need to focus on, definitely. So another, another aspect I'd like to touch upon as well, obviously management accounts, like annual accounts, to, to a degree is backward looking, although obviously very recent backward looking, so you can take actions fairly quickly. What about yeah. looking forward then? Would you say a good management information pack would include an element of a three or six month rolling cash flow, particularly in the, today's current environment? Would you add well, including that? Well, when it comes to cash flow, what, what I would say is that particularly in this environment, um, that I would suggest most businesses think about having weekly rolling cash flow forecasts. Probably going out 13 weeks, just, just receipts and payments. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to, um, so peri but periodically, quarterly, um, you might want to prepare full cash flow forecasts, forecast balance sheets, full forecast profit and loss accounts. Mm -hmm. and um, and include that sort of information as well. Mm. Um, the, you know, at the end of the day, business is about managing business is about looking at where you're heading. The mm. uh, management information there is to inform you and inform your planning, and and help you identify things that need to be fixed. Yeah. Um, and you can't plan if you don't know about the past and where you are. Yeah. What would you say to the arts again? Often speak to business owners when I say, "Right, we need some cash flow forecast." Particularly now, again in this current environment, where many businesses are applying for the coronavirus business interruption loan scheme C bills, uh, the lenders are asking for twelve month cash flow forecasts. And in many cases, for the smaller businesses, it's probably the first time that they've ever sat down to put a cash flow together. What would you say would be the kind of key considerations? Because many business owners I speak to say, "Oh, it's pure guesswork. I haven't got a clue what's going to happen over the next." couple of months what would you say to somebody who throws that objection at you it is a tricky one particularly in, in, in this environment i won't, won't pretend that no one knows how long this thing's going to last i think firstly having something rather than nof nothing provides um confidence to a, mm. to a lender mm. um it shows you're thinking about it um secondly you can, if you want, scenario plan. So you could do possibly three scenarios, or um, a best case, worst case, and most likely case, if you, um, if you like. Mm. Um, and, it, you know, if in this environment, um, any lender is going to want to, to see where you're heading, know that you're thinking about it. Mm. And, yes, yes, it's difficult. Any forecast, even in better times, never gonna be but it's 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 almost like setting out a route map or sat map. Yeah. Yeah. The one thing I've found when talking to uh... and then at some stage you might need to uh, recalculate, redo it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, what, what, one thing I'm saying I found with, with businesses when talking about cash flows, the first thing I say to them is, look, have a bash of doing it yourself. I'm certainly, I'm, I or your accountant could help, but I always believe that old phrase and saying, it's not the destination, it's the journey that you take. And I was only speaking to a business owner a couple of days ago who the first time he's really sat down to put a cash flow together. And he actually said after a couple of days later, he said, it's probably the best exercise I've done because it made me realize I haven't spoken to my suppliers for a while about challenging them on, on payment terms. I found a number of payments yeah. going out on a regular basis and I've just got used to having them going out. So kind of going through this whole exercise as well can also have a good benefit for, for profit as well. Uh, absolutely. And the same goes for management accounts. Mm. You know, I, I, I think, you know, as I said, I believe, um, all businesses, um, maybe not one-man bands, but all businesses of a size should be prepare, preparing management accounts and, uh, and certainly as they get um, bigger, preparing forecasts. Mm. But I think it's a case of what you never had, you never missed. And you, you talk, to talk to most owners that are doing these sort of things and they do actually appreciate give up the value. Mm. Yeah, okay. Look at looking ahead now, so over the next six, nine months or so, I guess you're going to say manager information is even more important now as we enter a quite challenging um, trading uh, period. 
Um, what do you, how do you think things are going to play out over the next six, nine months or so, particularly when we get back to, I say business as normal, everyone's saying that normal is not going to be what we believed it to be. Um, in terms of, of planning ahead and use of managing accounts, how do you see businesses being able to cope over the next six, nine months? I mean, what, one thing, just go, going back to my M&A type work, that one thing I, I encounter company, companies that are, have been quite cash generative. Some of them will have situations where they're having to take out loans and the, their financial management is going to be a completely different ball game. Mm. Um, now, I think that as you look out, uh, I, I couldn't, you know, got no crystal ball, can't say that there's, uh, given an exact timeline, but it's quite common that when businesses, when we come out of a session, that you, um, businesses start to ramp up activity mm. and that actually requires cash to support it. Um, you take the um, situation now where at some point the government support will stop, um, and thinking particularly of the VAT deferral that come um, March, April next year, that um, some businesses will be having to pay two, two VAT, VAT quarters cash. Yeah. The other thing is, as you, as you mentioned, um, the, uh, the new normal is probably not going to be the same as the old, um, old normal. Mm. Uh, I think businesses are going to actually have to be on top of their game and they're going to have to be quite agile. Mm. If you're going to be agile and change your plans, then, then you need to have um, proper information to support it. Um, so, and going back, I've probably repeated this two or three times already, but going back to the things about like margins for income streams, mm. you know, if one is suddenly going to um, take off and another one's going to fall off, you need to understand that and, and understand the implications of your business. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, my kind of take on it, I'm quite concerned for 2021, 2022. At the moment, business yeah. is much in survival mode. And this is where the uh, business interruption loan scheme comes into play, obviously, just yeah. to help cover critical costs. But when we get into, say, the beginning of 2021, when hopefully everything will start settling down and we start ramping up again, uh, see a situation where... Um, access to working capital is going to get really tight uh, because businesses will have borrowed and not for business growth, just borrow to keep in business, keep things ticking over. Yeah. And you know, there's not going to be any spare cash in the system. They're going to have to resort to even more borrowed money. Now, of course, the question is, will the bank step up? And so I can see a kind of another working capital crunch coming next year as businesses start to gear up. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, I'd agree with that. Mm. So, yeah. Again, I guess this is where having up-to-date management information uh, really comes into play to make sure you're in tip-top condition, we're ready to be able to tackle that, uh, that problem when it comes. Great. Well, I think, I think there's the, the informational benefits in terms of managing the business, but also you've got to have that information because if you are going for, uh, to, to back to the bank, they're going to want that information. Mm. Yeah, definitely. I, I can see from 2021 onwards, banks are going to take an even greater interest now into what business performance looks like. Uh, because you know, businesses will be heavily leveraged, uh, there will yeah. be volatility in the market. You're going to have lenders crawling all over everyone. So I guess yeah. the message is, if you haven't got management systems in place to produce accounts, get them done now. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Yeah, great. Absolutely, yeah. It's, uh, you know, I think it's, it, it's now is the time to up your game. Um, particularly, I suppose, if things are quiet, um, then you have some time to think about it. Mm. Yeah. Excellent. Good stuff. Well, thank you very much, David, for, for that. Really Pleasure. Insightful and a, and a good reminder about the importance of having up-to-date management information, but not only having the information, but using it proactively as well to identify red flags and to take action. So it's really grateful. Thanks very much, David. David, if people want to have a chat with you, particularly on perhaps on support on M&A activity and looking for opportunities to purchase businesses, how can people get hold of you? Uh, right, okay. Um, they can either email me, david at camrose, that's C-A-M-R-O-S-E consulting.co.uk, or they can contact me via LinkedIn, just put in uh, David Lewis, um, Camrose Consulting. Um, uh, uh, they can give me a call on 07836 331 677. Perfect. Excellent. Thank okay, you. thank you very much, Rob. Really appreciate Good to talk to you. your time today. 
Pleasure. Thanks very much for joining us on this uh, Business Finance Bulletin Extra. I look forward to being in touch with you again very soon. Thanks very much, David. Okay, cheers.